Hi, today we're going to talk about emotional EMF. So our goal is simply to do that. Talk about emotional EMF, it's the voltage generated across the length of a conductor that is moving through a magnetic field. Okay, and as I just said, it's the voltage induced across a conductor moving through a magnetic field. Great. And so you take a piece of metal, so Generally, conductors are metallic objects, so let's imagine a metal rod. It has a length L. It's moving with some velocity V through a magnetic field B. In that situation, the motional EMF works out to this, just VLB with a minus sign, and that denotes again that the um, if you get a complete circuit, you get an induced current that generates a field that opposes the motion, things like that. So the minus sign is consistent with Lenz's law. And this squiggly E thing again is EMF or voltage. Okay, now that is true as long as all those three factors, the velocity, the magnetic field, and the length of the rod are mutually perpendicular to each other. Okay? Otherwise, you don't get this, uh, this maximum possible value. Okay, so here's a case where we can apply the equation. So the blue arrow indicates the velocity of our rod. The rod has a length, and if you think of the rod as being vertical, then the velocity is horizontal. The length of the rod is measured in the vertical dimension, the long dimension of the rod. The rod's the red thing. And then all those x's in the picture represent the magnetic field that goes into the page. So this is an example where the velocity, the length, and the magnetic field are all mutually perpendicular to one another. And we can apply our E equals minus VLB equation. Okay, so imagine that this is a neutral object. It's a piece of metal, and it's got lots of electrons, it's got lots of protons, but overall it's neutral. However, what it does have is a bunch of uh, what we call conduction electrons, and those are free to move around in response to things like forces from electrical or magnetic fields. In this case, we're going to apply a force from the magnetic field. Okay, so then, after talking about electrons, I ask this question, in which direction do positive charges deflect if they move with the metal rod to the right in a magnetic field directed into the page? Okay, so we know that, in fact, the positive charges are fixed uh, in position on this rod, basically, and it's the electrons that really do the moving. But you could imagine positive charges that are free to move around, that are moving with the rod. And of course, there's a corresponding set of uh, negative charges, and those would be the electrons. Okay, so what you can do is you can say, okay, I'm going to just imagine a bunch of positive charges, a bunch of pluses, and they're moving with the rod. So they have a velocity to the right because the whole rod is moving to the right. And so we can use our right-hand rule associated with our F is QVB sine theta equation. Okay, so in this case, we figure out that we point our fingers in the direction of the velocity. That's to the right. We point our palm into the screen. That's the direction of the magnetic field. And the thumb points up toward the top. Okay, so this tells us the positive charges deflect up, negative charges deflect down. Okay, and what you get is uh, eventually an equilibrium will be reached because when you have positives at the top and negatives at the bottom, you will have an electric field built up in the rod that will act to counteract this, uh, this magnetic force. And what really happens, of course, is just the electrons move around, the conduction electrons, and they move down from the top toward the bottom, and so there's a deficit of electrons at the top, so there, there is a net positive charge at the top. Okay. So there's our emotional EMF. So what this does is it acts like a battery with a battery similar to this one here, where the positive terminal is at the top and the negative terminal is the bottom. Okay, that's what this rod does. Okay. So, what we do next is we hook this up in a circuit. Okay, so here's the same rod, but it's hooked up in a circuit now 
The blue things are uh, conducting rails. This is like like uh, the rails you find on a train track, for instance. Okay, so they're a pair of rails parallel to each other. They are conducting, separated by some distance L. L is the length of the rod, in fact. And we've got a resistor in the circuit. So the, in addition to being joined by the rod, the rails are also connected by a, a couple of wires. Those are the black things. And the big green thing is a resistor. And we're going to assume the resistance of our circuit here is basically concentrated in the resistor itself. So the rails and the wires and the rod itself have a negligible resistance in comparison to the resistance of this resistor here on the left. That's the green thing. Okay, so note that we don't have a battery here. All we have is the rod. If the rod just sits there, then nothing happens. But if we move the rod, then what's going to happen is it acts like a battery. So a moving rod acts like a battery, and then current will be flowing here. And we've got to figure out which way the current goes. Okay, so that's our next step. Okay, so will there be an induced current? Tell you what, there is one. So don't vote for three. So let's figure out what direction the induced current is in. Is that either runs clockwise or counterclockwise around the loop? And this is the same rod we talked about at the beginning, right? So if you think about kind of the equivalent battery that this rod acts like, then you should be able to very quickly figure out which way the current goes. So that's certainly one reasonable way to get the answer. And another way to get the answer is to apply the pictorial method. So let's go through that one. And in fact, the animation actually does the pictorial method for us. So near the beginning, the system looked like this. And as we let the rod move to the right, then we've got a loop which has changed. And in particular, the magnetic flux through the loop has changed, right? We've got more flux after the rod has moved to the right than we started with. Okay, so there's been an increase in magnetic field lines passing through the loop into the page. Okay, so those are our before and after pictures. And so the loop opposes the change and shows that there is an induced current. And what it does is it tries to counteract the uh, change in magnetic flux that we've imposed on it. So we've added field lines into the page. So to try and counteract that, the loop sets up a current that produces field that comes out of the page. And if you do your right hand rule, field going out of the page requires counterclockwise current. Okay, and that's totally consistent with this rod moving to the right in this field would be a plus. Uh, end of the rod at the top, minus at the bottom, just like a battery with a plus at the top, minus at the bottom, would create a counterclockwise current if it's hooked up in the circuit. So the moving rod acts like a battery. Okay, so that is all for today.